welcome to my channel and here myself pranita ma'am and me i would like to welcome you all as well to learn with fun with pranita ma'am so let me first tell you all that i am on this online platform only because of my sweet 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 students who inspired me a lot that ma'am during this serious issue of covid 19 quarantine and lockdown by the government we need your help and i am here for you all okay so without wasting a moment let us begin with our first topic from english literature and your name of the book is first flight and the name of our first poem is dust of snow dust of snow is written by american poet robert frost let me tell you something about robert frost he is a poet who generally keeps the theme of his poem or the central idea of his poem as human feelings now human feelings joys that you experience happiness that you feel when you are sad or you are in a sorrow and so on so robert frost have in this poem explained us something that is called as irony of a situation now before coming to what is irony and all let me or let me first tell you about the title of the poem and the title of the poem dust of snow the word dust the first thought that you get when do you when you hear the word dust is something that is waste or you can say that something or in hindi we call it as dhool right but here it is not dhool or something that is a waste or some kachra that is accumulated but here the word dust means to pour or to fall apart okay so let us now come to the situation of the poem that is what do you mean by irony irony itself is a figure of speech as you know this figure of speech can be better elaborated with a few examples when i say meet my intelligent son who failed in his exam what 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 is this this is nothing but irony signifies something or a situation where you mean something else and you say something else now when i say intelligent son so he has to be the topper of the class obviously but no here i am saying my intelligent son failed in his exam so that is somewhere i am trying to tell that he is dumb okay next next example um yeah you sing so sweetly just like a crow <laughs> okay let's not make a fun of this but yeah you very well know crow his voice is so annoying that you cannot bear him for a second that cow cow you know but i am saying you sing so sweetly like a crow i indirectly mean you sing so badly so this is what you mean by irony of a situation so let us learn what robert frost want to tell us by what is irony in dust of snow okay okay so i am going to read out the poem for you all the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree has given my heart a change of mood and see some part of the day i had rude okay so i read the lines for you i know ki without a background of a powerpoint slide i am just having my laptop for you all but uh, i i request you all to open your textbook so that whatever i say it definitely fits in your brain more clearly okay so coming here to the first chapter first chapter symbolizes two important aspects one crow second hemlock tree now have you ever heard about bad women or hindi mein hum jo kehte hain ki ek myth hota hai ki ye particular cheez jo hai ya ye particular vyakti jo hai it symbolizes or hame wo ek bad you can say intention dete hain ya wo bad hame impression dete hain jaise a bad woman is said to a crow because crow signifies death in hindu mythology next hemlock tree hindi mein we call it as dhatura plant 
you all might worship uh, lord shiva and when uh, you worship him you definitely bestow a, a thorny fruit that is a datura i think you all might have uh, got its image in your brain by now so it is a poisonous fruit and hemlock tree itself is a poisonous tree so again what do you mean by this poisonous tree it is nothing but it symbolizes some negative things so crow and hemlock tree two negative things are being symbolized here now coming to the situation of the first stanza we are supposed to assume two things one the poet is standing under a hemlock tree and it is snowing okay so as a person when you visit a particular snow clad region and it starts snowing what do you do you enjoy the scenario but no here robert frost is standing under a hemlock tree which gives negativity and a crow is sitting on its branch the second negative omen okay so what should happen with him something bad he should he should uh, lose uh, you can say interest in life and bad things should go because as per the myth both the objects are indicating negativity but here the situation says ki when the particular crow tries to move his body or he moves his wings or he just tries to fly away because of the movement of the crow the snow which is accumulated on the branch of the tree just shakes and fall down on the poet now this is again an imagination that is a second assumption that we are supposed to make that the crow will move or its wings or it will move itself and the snow is going to fall down now because of this particular moment what will happen when a uh, particular like you are unaware that this is going to happen and suddenly something falls on you what's your reaction you get a shock yes exactly the poet here gets a shock and this shock is nothing but he feels ki oh god wow yeah it's snowing and i should enjoy the situation and what am i doing i'm standing under the hemlock tree with a load of tension in my mind and i'm just thinking what is going to happen and what not but this crow and hemlock tree who are negative omens first time did something positive for the poet and that is nothing but it shook him it shattered him and it made him realize that come on you are supposed to enjoy the situation and that is where our second stanza begins that is it changes the mood of the poem poet and the poet now starts enjoying the day so the first half of the day for the poet was full of tensions and because of this incident that is the uh, crow moves and the snow falls on him and he realizes oh enjoy the moment and the second half of the day is basically enjoyed by him i would definitely like to specify the meaning of the last word here of the day i had ruled he was spoiling his own day by thinking and thinking and overthinking and because of the crow and the hemlock tree somewhere now his day has changed so now students you tell me what did you understand you understand a very simple thing here ki things are not something that is mentioned in the books that is being told to you so here you are supposed to definitely remember that don't go on myths this is what robert frost tries to teach us and i hope you all have understood this poem very well now let us move on to the next part that is you need to know what was the central idea of the poem you need to know what are the figures of speech used in the poem and you need to know what do you mean by the rhyme scheme and what is the rhyme scheme used in the poem so the first thing that is the central idea of the poem so here the poet tries to express a situation in life where you need to change okay and i have already explained you it is a ironical poem what is irony and what do you mean by irony of a situation so i hope you are clear with it moving on to the figures of speech used so the most important figure of speech is alliteration now you all know that what do you mean by alliteration it is when a letter jaise ki s here okay is repeated in the same line in continuous form so as a result alliteration is one of the figures of speech and next here is symbolism now what do you mean by this figure of speech symbolism a crow and the hemlock tree they are being symbolized as negative uh, myths or you can say negative omen 
so symbolizing a particular object to a particular thought is called as symbolism so i hope you are clear with this the last part that is the rhyme scheme of the poem so here you can say crow snow me tree the last word of the lines okay so the first and the third line it's is snow and crow second and the fourth line me tree so they are sound similar so the first and the third line is a a second and the fourth line is b b so the rhyme scheme of the poem is a b a b i hope you are clear definitely i would appeal you all i know you would love the video so don't forget to make a thumbs up next subscribe my channel to get all the latest notifications that i am going to release and you all know quarantine is a very long period so i hope you have understood my secret that is you are going to get lots and lots and lots of videos from me and you are going to learn from home and learn with from learn with fun with none other than pranita ma'am you can call me pari ma'am as well and whatever doubts you have definitely put in the comment section below so that i can make changes in my video whatever needed and yes i'm going to try my best to give you the notes of this particular poem so that i don't know whether you have purchased the textbooks or not if is if so you can definitely refer to my notes so that you get the picture of the poem as well as you get all the answers for the textual questions given in your first slide okay see you love you all and wait and stay tuned for my next video bye bye